So in the previous video we looked at this uh, main subroutine and how the whole program is structured. So in this video what we're going to do is take a bit of a closer look at some of the <coughs> functions, specifically ones that are called up in this first little section here. So it actually starts off with a bit of confusion because this uh, set of five lines here says it writes a line asks you if you want to play a sample game gets the input and then runs this condition. Uh, but the the problem is, if we scroll down just past the main sub, we see uh, this. So what this is doing is this is asking the same question and returning the same uh, value. So it's doing exactly the same thing, but the problem is this is this function is never actually called within the program. So, whether that's going to be a question saying, "Well, this program has not called, not used a function or something," I don't know, but that might might be the case. Probably won't be, but okay. So, all this does it just gets user input using a read line and a little question, and that returns it. it well, it would return it if it was called. So, the next thing is this little condition statement here. It says if the ASCII value of sample game is greater than or equal to 97 and it's less than or equal to 122, then change it, then change it to the character which has the ASCII value of sample game minus 32. So what this actually does is it changes any lowercase letters to uppercase letters because you should know this, but the in the ASCII table, so we use ASCII to represent characters with seven bits. So we have from, I believe it is 65, is A, but it's a capital A. And then if we go up to 97, so 32 greater than that, we have lowercase a. And so what this little function is doing is saying, look, if it's a lowercase letter, if it's within this range, 97 to 122, then I want you to change that to an uppercase letter by taking 32 from the ASCII value. And that's all that's doing, it just makes it easier and so you know that that input is going to be a capital from now on. Uh, the next subroutine, which is called, is called initialize board. And as you can probably guess, this uh, sets up the board and it puts all the pieces in the right place to start the game. So, oddly enough, this function is placed all the way down uh, here, here, here it is, all the way down here, right in the bottom. So we can see that this is past uh, uh, the two-dimensional board array as a, a string uh, by reference, which means that this subroutine can edit that uh, variable. And it's passed the sample game character as a value, so it, it can look at it, but it can't edit it. So at the start of this uh, routine, we have two variables as as integers being created, rank number and file number. Now these are counter variables, so these will be used in for loops to count from one to some number. So let me get into this quite a large if statement. So it says if sample game equals y. So if we want to play the sample game, this is going to set up the pieces as they are in the sample game. So I'm just going to run the program now and I'm going to say yes, I do want to play the sample game. And we can see that not all the pieces are here and they're just kind of dotted around in certain place and it's probably a very easy way of playing this game and winning. But never mind, we just need to know that there are pieces dotted around and let's just move this over to the side and have a look at this. So we, we can see it says, uh, well, first of all, it looks at this for loop. So it says for rank number equals one to board dimension. And then inside the for loop is another for loop. This is for file number equals one to board dimension. So what this does is it starts on rank one. So uh, this rank up here at the top. And it says, right, I want to go from file 1 to file 8, and in every single square I want you to say that location, so the board rank number file number, remember it comes rank first when you're using this variable, 
We want that to be equal to space space. I, I promise you that it is two spaces. And so what this does is it goes through the board and it goes rank by rank, going through each file in each rank, and just basically empties the board, sets it up so it's completely empty, and yeah, that's basically it. And then what it does is after these four loops have been run, it will place each of these pieces individually. So we see in position 1, 2, so that would be rank 1, file 2, uh, we place a black Gizgi gear. So if you look in rank, uh, file 2, rank 1, black Gizgi gear, there it is. And this just sets up all these pieces in predetermined locations. That's fairly simple to understand, so I'm going to move on from that. And now we're going to have a look at this else condition, which looks quite scary, but I promise you it's fine. So this is setting up the game to be played as a normal game. So let's just start the program. Let's have a look at what that looks like on the game itself. So we can see it says on each side we have the black redums here and the white redums. So they're on the second row in from each end. And then on the top and bottom rows we have all these special little pieces like the Sauron, the Marzipani, etc. So if we have a look at this code, I'm going to hide that for a sec. We see we, we still have the same for rank number equals 1, for file number equals 1. And so that this is doing the same idea, it's looping through the board so it looks at every single square. And for every single square it's going to run this section of code in the middle here and decide whether to place a piece in there or whether to empty the square itself. So we can see it starts off with a very simple one. So it says if rank number equals 2, so rank 2 is here, that's where all the black randoms are. So it's saying if the rank number is 2, I want you to set all of those squares to be BR for black random. And it does the same thing for the uh, it, uh, it uses an else command, so it says if this, else, so if that's not true, then do this. So it says if rank name number equals 7, then change all those to white redums. Because those can't be true at the same time, so it's, it's fine to use that kind of if command. And now we get onto the uh, the black and white kind of special pieces. So we have this, it will set uh, rank 1 and rank 8 to be either B or W, depending on which rank it is. And that's a bit confusing because surely there's meant to be two characters in those boxes, and there is. So what this is doing is it's making sure it knows it puts in the T the side of uh which the piece is on first, and then it uses this select case. So what a select case is is like a, a condensed if uh statement. So we say look at file number, so we select the case for file number, so we have a look at that. So say it's, I don't know, 3. It'll look down through each of these cases until it finds case 3 here, and then it'll run the command within here, so it says uh, board rank that, that, that. And so let's have a look at these. So on files 1 and files 8, which if we have a look are the corners of the board, so far rank 1 file 1, rank 1, file 8, and so on. It's What it's going to do is it's going to take the value in the board at that point, and it's going to assign the value of itself and a G. So what this is using concatenation, which is a, a technique used with strings, so you're basically putting two strings together to make a bigger one. So we already have uh, a B or a W in that square, and we're putting and G, which will obviously creates BG for the black Gizgi gear or WG for the white Gizgi gear. And so we get this two character symbol for this piece. And th it's the same idea for all of these pieces. So we have uh, on files 2 and 7, uh, so if you look on the board that's the E and the E for the Etlu. We have the same thing except the G is replaced with an E. And then the same thing for ranks 3 and 6, it's the Nabu and it's just the Nabu. And case 4, so we're looking at when file number is 4, we set it the Matzas Pani, and when case equals 5, we set it the Sarum. Now this is a bit odd, because that means that the Sarum is on the same row. In, normally in chess we have them switched round, so they're kind of 
rotational, like uh, symmetrical rotationally wise. So it's on the same side no matter which way you look at it from white or black. So I know that's just how they've programmed it. That might be something to look at maybe. Um, so that's that's basically how the function works. It takes it takes the board and fills it with pieces. But what if that square isn't one that we need to piece in? So we can look all the these four rows here aren't don't have any pieces in for the normal game. And so that's where this last little else statement comes in. So it says if none of these are true, so it's not any of these places where we want a piece to be, we'll say we want that square to be empty. So board rank file number file number equals space space. And that's it really. That's that function explained in a nutshell. Let me just close all of these if statements so we have the two for loops and the final if statement which is for whether it's sample game or not. That's that uh, function. In the next video I believe we'll be looking at uh, displaying the board, uh, displaying whose turn it is which is a bit self-explanatory and s uh, the sections of the move validation area, although not the actual move validation itself. That will be in the one after the next video. Okay, thank you. See you in the next video.